We live in a culture where people love to call themselves independent. You know, get a new job, move out of your parents' place, you're independent. But are you? In what ways are you independent? Do you make your own food? Do you collect your own water? Do you extract and refine the oil that you put in your tank? I, I mean, I do, but I, I'm a hobbyist. <laughs> Everything we have is made by somebody else. You might contribute something to the huge global pool of labor, but you rely on a million other people to live the life you lead. And that's okay. That's what a society is. The problem is the political economic system that governs this society. We call it capitalism because the state forces society by law to prioritize accumulating capital. Have you ever noticed it's really easy for people who already have lots of money to hold on to it or make it grow? That's because capitalism is designed to benefit the people who own everything. The rest of us do all the work, because if we don't work enough, we get forced out of our homes, deprived of food, soap, medicine, or whatever else we need that costs money, maybe going to prison, or maybe just dying of exposure on the sidewalk while people in limousines drive by unconcerned. I've talked about this system in, from various points of view on this channel, but today I wanted to talk about the metaphor of us being crabs in a bucket. I want to explain it the way I see it, in a different way than is intended by the expression, because I think it would help us ex understand why capitalism is so divisive and why we need to unite to overcome it. So you're a crab, happily beachcombing one day, when out of nowhere, some hand grabs you and throws you in a bucket. Isn't that a fine how do you do? Suddenly, your circumstances have changed. You find yourself confined in a narrow space, crammed in with other crabs, with no idea how to get out. While you're contemplating your situation, the other crabs start jostling you. Mm -mm. Crabs that you know personally, or maybe you knew their parents, start trying to drag you down. This is where the metaphor usually ends. The idea is, if you try to escape this situation, people around you will try to pull you back down to their level, because that's what crabs do, apparently, and everyone will suffer and die together. And that's an important lesson, sure. There are people who will try to pull you down, and you need to be strong not to let them. But I think there's a bigger lesson in this bucket. So like I was saying, you're a crab in a bucket full of crabs. You come to the conclusion the only way to get out of this prison is by stepping on the backs, or shells, of everyone else. You also realize if you do that, you're the only crab who's going to make it. The rest will be stuck in this nightmare until they're eaten. One crab can win the prize, the others will be killed. If it sounds a bit like Squid Game, that's because both the bucket and the game represent the capitalist system. I already talked about Squid Game here, but how is the bucket like capitalism? Well, first, we are forced into every aspect of this system. Under threat of violence, we are expected to follow every law, comply with every order, and use money for everything we need. It took me so long to understand that there is nothing voluntary about this system. It is forced on us. Money doesn't exist to oil the wheels of commerce like we've been told all our lives. It's to keep us all dependent. If we have to use money for everything, we have to get money somehow. For some reason that people never feel the need to explain, but which I will in a future video, a tiny percentage of the world's population owns most of its resources. They just own everything. If we want any of those resources, you know, like food, we have to beg for money from the people who have it all. If we don't do whatever they want us to do, however hard or dangerous, however many hours, we don't get to eat. But what if I told you there was a way out of the bucketist system? 
What if you could escape the precarity and drudgery of the 9 to 5? What if instead of wondering if you'll ever retire, you can retire early? What you gotta do is own stuff. If you own stuff, other people do the work, but you still get paid the most. The trick is, you pay people the market wage, which, you know, is whatever, however much you and the other owners decide it is, and you just take the rest. If you take enough, you don't have to work at all anymore. You can just let others do everything and sit back and get richer. They call it letting your money work for you, but the money is paying for other people's time and effort, so really you're making people who need the money work for you. Owners claim to contribute, but they really just own things. In a population where the majority are compelled to work, some of them will be willing to work for the meager wage you offer because the punishment for not doing so, poverty, is worse. Every person you employ is a stepping stone. The more your business expands, the more people you employ, so the more stones you have. You ensure they never have enough money to get out of the bucket because nowadays, I mean, who can retire on less than a six-figure salary? But don't worry, at least you'll be able to get out. The thing about capitalism, the need to profit from everything, is it changes us from a social animal to a bunch of individuals. A crab in a bucket has to use others to escape. But a bucket is a highly artificial situation for a crab to be in. If we were smart crabs and saw the hand coming, we could pinch it. We might form some kind of crab wall, <laughs> coming together to ward off the invader, like Voltron, or Captain Planet, or the Transformers, or the Power Range. You know, now that I think about it, most kids' shows did that in the 90s. Anyway, but unlike those crabs, we were born in the bucket. So we can't see a way out other than stepping on other people. You might feel bad for the other crabs, but you're expected to think only of yourself. It's okay, you might tell them, as you're making your way over the top. When I get settled on a beach somewhere, I'll try to get the rest of you out. But you can't. The crabs are still divided. The bucket is still there. The hand is still searching. A regular supply of crabs will suffer like you did. Capitalism keeps us divided, like, like the crabs. We have to compete for jobs and promotions. We get jealous of people who can afford better stuff than us. We're wary of friendly people because we know everyone's out to make money off us. We rationalize our possession of money as a result of hard work, and other people's poverty is their own fault. If only you crabs down there had provided value the way I have, you'd be up here with me. The only way for us all to be free of this system is to tip over and break the bucket. Crabs can hit the wall of the bucket as hard as they want, but alone they can do nothing. So they need to join forces. What happened in all those old shows? The heroes kind of jumped in the air at the same time and became Voltron or one of the others. All these amalgamated super superheroes are metaphors for what we can do when we work together. Hey gang, we're some ethnically diverse young people from the 90s struggling against the same enemy, but we're still losing. What if, instead of fighting a more powerful enemy one by one, we combine our strength and fight it together? Woo! Alright! Far out! Let's go, dudes! Let's go break the bucket! If you thought that dialogue was bad, you've never watched Power Rangers. If the crabs could formulate a plan, they might try to form a pyramid. Let one or two crabs climb to the top, then sway back and forth until the bucket falls over, and all the other crabs can escape. If the escaped crabs use their claws to smash the bucket, no other hand can use this bucket to terrorize our fellow crabs. Solidarity and mutual aid can be those claws. Thanks.